Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Today, folks, we'll be talking about another watch from Ballast Watches, and this is uh, one of their military-inspired automatic watches. And this is a watch um, that's been um, kind of created or um, kind of themed after the USS Pampanito. And that was a wartime submarine. Uh, that uh, submarine is currently... Uh, and I believe forever will be in San Diego. I'm not sure which port it is in San Diego, but um, you can actually take tours. So um, if I'm ever in San Diego, I would love to check out some of these awesome ships and submarines. Um, I really like when watch companies uh, like Ballast, uh, hence the name Ballast. It's a very military-themed watch company. I love when they do stuff that's military-related. Uh, my dad, I've said it many times, is a huge military buff. He loves World War II and history um, more so than I do. But I really appreciate history, and I do appreciate um, you know wa companies like this that try to do something a little bit different, right? Uh, we've all seen dozens of homage watches to you know submar to submariners, and you know your really expensive luxury brands. I think it's a lot cooler to wear something on your wrist that has a little bit of a story and how and, and you know relating to history, not just something that's you're wearing for the name, right? I mean, let's face it. I say it many times, many videos, you know, you're wearing a Rolex for the name. Again, shouldn't dissuade you, and I don't mean to beat the horse dead, right? But there are so many cool watches out there that just to me. Um, have a lot more passion than something like a luxury, super expensive piece. Really, with a luxury watch like that, you really, again, buy what makes you happy, but I'll never spend a lot of money on a watch when you have watches like this. These watches have a story, uh, and, it, and that's what watch collecting, in my eyes, is all about, is being able to have a story, share these stories with other people, and you learn more along the way. I would never really, you know, think about looking into World War II submarines or ships. It's just not something I'm super interested in, right? However, when I get a watch like this, it makes me want to watch more and learn more about it. And I think it's pretty cool. At least it gets a little bit of a conversation between me and my dad uh, that doesn't relate to just watches in general and, uh, you know, me talking about how loud I want my stereo system in my car and how I, you know, I mean, it's a little bit more... Um, a little more substance, right? So I think this is fantastic. So again, the watch we're going to talk about today is Ballast Automatic uh, Pampanino. They just called the Pampanino. Um, and again, what they said on your description, they just talk about uh, the submarine. A lot of times I don't read this, but this is pretty small, so I'm just going to read you the description. They said, USS Pampanino, built in 1943, was a reflection of the instrumental role that the U.S. Navy fleet uh, submarines had in the Allied victory in the Pacific during World War II. Um, the USS Pampanino made six patrols in the Pacific during World War II during which she sank six Imperial Japanese ships and damaged four others. Uh, she was, uh, it says also, she was built at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in New Hampshire, launched on July 12, 1943, and served six patrols before being de decommissioned in 1945 earning six battle stars for her World War II service. What a cool story, right? And that's what Rallis does with a lot of their watches, if not all their watches. Um, I love this company, and I just want to thank them again, like I do in every single video, like I do with every company, but it is really cool to get a watch that has a story. You know, you guys know I love Invicta, I love Aragon. Uh, of my 165 watches, you know, I, I enjoy them all. They all have a little bit of a story, but really cool that they've, I don't know, create this watch around this particular submarine. Now, what I was trying to find out, this is a really unique watch. We're going to talk about it, and hopefully what will happen is when I do these videos, companies usually get back to me and kind of answer some of my questions. Sure, I could ask these questions beforehand, but I like to kind of learn the information with you guys and then have a dialogue in the description when I find this information out. It keeps me going back to videos and keeps me responding to content. It keeps everything fresh, right? So, uh, first off the bat, I'm just going to show you the postcard. They give you a postcard showing you uh, what the actual actual submarine uh, looks like and I believe this is a, a picture made to look older of course um, it's been altered of course you know with some filters and whatnot but this I believe is in San Diego where the ship is actually or the the vessel is actually docked then on the back it shows just Pampanino uh, Pampan, Pampanito and uh, a little outline of the submarine like most ballast watches um, the two I've reviewed so far uh, really nice wooden box and again you guys know when I do a watch review I never really do a lot of unboxings usually because I'm too impatient I just rip it open like get on Christmas morning like a Red Rider BB gun here in the Christmas story uh, that's kind of how I am with everything I get really excited about things uh, so uh, <laughs> again this is cool and I you know when I, you open one Invicta box you've opened them all right they're yellow they immediately go the bot the box gets ripped across apart thrown into the garbage can with this these are boxes I want to keep and if you 
you are gifting a watch to somebody, what a nicer presentation than this all solid hardwood box. I'm not sure what kind of wood it's made out of. Um, probably nothing too elaborate, but it's got like a nice kind of cherry stain, cherry color, and then of course ballast in that chrome uh, lettering. Uh, when I open it, you ready? I'm gonna open this up. It's kind of like an unboxing, right? So we're just gonna flip this sucker open and then, there we go. Uh, very vintage feel to it, right? When you open this, I feel like you're opening something you might see on like Pawn Stars, right? It's like documented. I don't know. It just looks really cool without, you know, I, I don't, again, guys, you know, I never really take watch collecting too seriously. This is meant to be fun. And I hope when you see me open a, a watch, how excited I get. Uh, just awesome. Just absolutely awesome. So you get the watch, of course, limited edition. I believe all, if not most, are all of uh, ballast watches are limited edition pieces. Pretty cool. My particular one is number 28 of 400. And I've really generous this company to work with me. Uh, this is, again, I mention it every video <laughs> when it comes to watches. This is why I love having YouTube, right? I get a lot of cool stuff to wear and enjoy and add to my collection. So, again, uh, and, that's, and that's the best way of doing it because not only do I get a watch, but it allows me to wear it and actually give you guys content years later and really... Get, let you guys get to know what the watch is going to be like long term. If this watch fails in a year, you bet I'm going to tell you about it. Sorry, Bells. Uh, but I don't see that happening with their brands, right? Um, just awesome. So you get the little uh, write-up about the USS Pampanito. Uh, you get an instruction manual, of course. And uh, what else you get? You get a little kind of a warranty warranty card, which I, I never really, you know, I don't know why they give these things out anyway, but it's, you know, it's it's the paperwork that comes with most watches. Uh, let me get this back in here. All right, let's, let's just, let's just bust the watch out, okay? So, all right, so enough about the box. So, man, I tell you, they, uh, they sent me, I don't know, four, four watches by, yeah, four ballast watches, uh, more coming from their other brand, RGMT, another military style inspired watch. But the ballast watches tend to have more of a story, whereas the RGMT watches are just kind of military, loosely inspired, right? They could be military, they could be dive, they're not, they don't have the story, and that's really cool about these watches. So, uh, one thing I don't know about this watch, and I want to talk about the specifics, the basic stuff, does it check the check boxes for us watch collectors, right? And that may be different than my checklist. Um, but one thing I'm a little confused on, this is a very innovative movement, the way they've, they've designed the face and the way the watch works. Um, actually, to me, this is a little, I don't get embarrassed easy, but what, what I find a little embarrassing is I'm wearing a watch and people always notice, they're always like, man, that's a beautiful watch, especially, you know, the bigger ones get noticed a little more. This is not small, so this will get noticed. But they always ask me what time it is. <laughs> and half the time, I don't even have this, the watch set. I know, I know. I'm sorry, but, um, you know, a lot, I just wear these for really jewelry, you know, it's really, that's just how I wear them, it's an accessory. Um, I do set them sometimes, but because I rotate so often, sometimes I'll just throw it on and I'll forget. I was at the casino the other day, and the lady's like, oh my God, that's beautiful. And I was like, oh, thank you, thanks. She's like, what, what, what time is it? And I had to pull up my phone, I'm like, I have no idea. So, uh, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, what I do like about this, and I know, believe it or not, for a guy who always wears watches and reviews watches, again, I have to kind of look at the watch. I can't look at it really fast and tell time. Now, I'm off to stare at it for 10 minutes, right? I don't mean to over embellish. But with this, this is a lot easier for me to tell time. And how it works is basically your large hand here is your minute hand, right? Very easy to distinguish. It's, you know, right now 31. Then, of course, your hour is on the smaller dial. And very easy, you can see it says 2. So without, like, this is almost like an analog digital watch to me. Very easy for, for guys like me to tell the time. Like this, I don't have to look at it and be like, all right, is it, you know, especially some of the other ones I got, which are don't really have any numbers. You know, I got to really kind of stare at them. Uh, <laughs> I should work on that. Uh, but this, super easy uh, for me to tell the time. It's got the, uh, and you can see as you, if you turn the crown, it is a screw down crown, of course. If we unscrew the crown and pop this out and we go to turn it, you can see as I turn the dial, once we hit the 12 o'clock position and the wheel hits the 6, uh, it'll actually turn uh, the hour. So right now I just pop the 3, and of course, I know this is kind of common sense, PC to 4. So very easy. Again, I call it like a digital analog, or like an analog digital almost, right? 
that come out right. Um, so pretty cool. I mean, I, I I think it's really interesting when we look at watches nowadays. It's hard to almost like reinvent the wheel, and it's difficult for people to get used to things that are pretty, in my opinion, kind of exotic, right? It's a different look, and it's different. You see plenty of watch comes out there doing very unique things, and this is the first one, honestly, in my collection that has anything quite like this. And after having, when I first looked at it online, I was like, okay, that's kind of a gimmick. After having it and wearing it, it, it makes it really easy for me to tell the time. So uh, without that little de embarrassed delay, right? I'm like, oh, it's, uh, you know, super easy. So I love that. Uh, what else? It is an automatic, of course, and it is powered. Uh, you can see the wheels spinning. This one is a Miyota. Usually you can tell the Miyotas versus the Seikos, uh, like the NH35, 6, 7s. The uh, rotor actually kind of like jitters, so to speak. It kind of like it sort of kind of turns, whereas Miyotas are, I believe, ball bearinged and they just spin around. Now, I think it for you watch guys who really get involved in the movement and all stuff, um, you know, I believe the Miyota charges or winds in both directions. I could be wrong in that. Uh, and the Seiko in one. Obviously, you guys will let me know like you do everything. So uh, let's talk about the specifications now. So again, they refer to it and they need to update their website, just Japanese automatic movement. Uh, they need to list Miyota on this. And I don't think they list it on the back. They do list the water resistance, which is ATMs, limited edition, of course, 28 out of 400. Uh, again, 316 stainless steel and automatic ballast. But um, I have several watches that use the Miyota movement. Whether you go with Miyota, whether you have Seiko, whatever the movement is, remember, nobody's really making anything that's poor, right? Unless you get something with an absolute no-name brand, super entry level, then you might have longevity issues, and you may not. With a Miyota, a Seiko, a Ro whatever you choose, Rolex, whatever you get, these are, remember, a super high-end luxury watch, there's not a lot of differences, right? Mainly, it's finishing differences. So, longevity is just as good as something like a Miyota, a Seiko, a, an ETA, whatever Whatever it may be, a value, they're all different, but they're all good. And so this has got that Miyota movement. I mean, super well respected. I believe Miyota is owned by Citizen, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I should know after all these years. Uh, pretty cool kind of rose tone, almost like a bronze colored hands. And of course, the bronze crown. Uh, this one, exhibition window. Not all of the ballast watches have the exhibition window. Uh, and then they have the ballast logo with that black. I've seen other ballast watches with the automatic movements. I believe several of them have that black rotor, kind of like Invicta uses the yellow rotor. Ballast, I believe, does their black rotor. As I get more watches into review, uh, I'll let you guys know if there's any difference. So I'll band on this. Again, all 316 stainless steel. They did a dual push button deployant butterfly clasp on this, I believe what it's called. Uh, very easy to pop on and off your wrist, but not really any different than any other watch. It's really just a personal preference. Again, check boxes, right? We got a, a good quality Miyota movement, right? We got uh, 316 stainless steel for the for the, uh, um, the the material for case and bracelet. Uh, what else? 30 millimeters in bandwidth, 150 grams for those who care for watch weight, for those who are a little bit sensitive. Uh, and then of course, uh, what else? It does have anti-reflective sapphire crystal that does check the box for some folks. Uh, and then of course, 15 millimeters in case thickness, 49 millimeters in case diameter. So getting to be a bigger watch, right? For you guys who love the Invictus, this has got that wrist beef as I call it, right? So let me just throw it on the wrist while we're, man, really pretty. I, uh, I've been wearing this one the last couple days and What's cool about it and what I think is, you know, we know that watches tend to get noticed more the larger and flashier they are, right? If, if you're not a watch person. If you're a watch person, you start to notice everything, right? And then as you start to develop your brand favorites, you got to notice more. Like me, I'll notice anything somebody's wearing. But with this, what's really cool about this is that it's not over the top huge, but it's got that really interesting face, right? And the really interesting way that it tells time. And I think it's really cool because if people look at that, they're not used to seeing something like that. And I gotta tell you, even with me, I was like, oh, I get a little, sometimes I'm, I'm taken back by it because you don't have that second hand, you know, which to me um, is really kind of meaningless, but some folks may like that. It's just your traditional ticking, you know? This doesn't have that. So uh, really different, really unique, and again, super easy to tell the time, and it has a beautiful wrist presence. Um, the bracelet on this kind of reminds me of, um, I don't know, I can't, I can't really 
there's something out of my collection that makes me think this is kind of similar, uh, just in the in the way that it kind of tapers. Uh, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but definitely has a really high-end exotic look to it. Uh, really awesome looking watch. You can see what it looks like on my 7-inch wrist. Again, I weigh about 185 pounds, and this is what it looks like I got in my size, my height, and my weight. I'm about 5 foot 7 and a half. Um, and you know, seven inch wrist is, I'd say, I'd say the average is about six and a half. Seven's a little bit bigger. Uh, a few big boys, uh, this one here, I removed four links out of it. And so far, out of all the ballast watches, it's been four links. Uh, so I think I have the links here, yeah, I do, right here. Let's see if these are the ones here. So, yeah, these are the ones. So you're going to be taking out, that looks like a little bit almost a little bit over an inch. Let me see what that actually measures. So a few folks were like, ah, oh, I got this wrist or that wrist. Um, getting close to two inches. So I'd say an inch and three quarters, inch and three quarters is what I removed out of this. So uh, again, eight and three quarter inch wrist, you'd probably be good to go. There are no micro adjustments in this. Just kind of keep that in mind. Just depends on which uh, watch you go with, but this doesn't have the micro adjustments. Some folks need that. Just kind of keep that in mind. So uh, Ballast is a pretty amazing company. If you're a big, I mean, look at that wrist presence. I mean, 49 millimeter, I know a lot of times we're like, oh, it's not, it, remember guys, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, some folks still comment. They're like, oh, it, for you to like a watch, it's gotta be big. No, it doesn't. I like all watches and I appreciate all of them. Uh, but for 49 millimeter, you know, for us guys who, who, you know, really like the big watches, this is not a small watch, and if you're used to watches in that 42 millimeter range, this is going to be huge, um, and I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, the one thing I don't know about this watch, and I'm hoping uh, once I get the information, I will drop a comment, and you know, you guys always drop comments. I, re I respond to every comment I get, um, and I will put it in the description as well, is that I'm not sure where the inspiration came for the face, and I wish, again, that's something that I just wish that Ballast needs to make, I mean, when you have several different companies, I get it, you know, they, you know, they may, somebody may not have told them this, but to me, I'd like to see not just a description about the ship or about the, the submarine, but I want to know the inspiration behind the watch. What does this have to do with that, right? Because if we look at this and I didn't tell you, oh, well, this is, you know, uh, a military inspired watch from, from the uh, uh, Pampanito. You, there's nothing linking this to the Pampanito that I can tell. So I'd like to know, I'd like them to add a little bit more in the description. Where did the inspiration come from? Is there a gauge? Is there something special on the ship that looks like this? Uh, is there something to, with these holes drilled? There must be something on the, I keep saying ship, but the submarine to tie it to this watch. And that's where the only negative thing I have to say about this right now is that their website doesn't have that information. So as I get more information, I will share it. I suspect there is something on this particular uh, vessel that um, somehow relates to this watch, whether it be the crown, whether it be design aspects from inside the ship. Not really sure yet, but I will let you know, and I hope that after they see this video, that if they do know that they list that on their website, because I want to see what ties it. I think they really need to take that design aspect from wherever they're building their inspiration from and put it directly on the site. And that will, I think that will really be helpful to really uh, market their brand better, right? Because they're beautiful watches insane quality. I mean, again, I'm not saying member value is subjective. I'm not saying that this is a better value than others and whatnot. But what I am saying is that if you're, you know, if for a watch collector, if you're looking for those box to be checked, the quality, the movement, uh, the, the crystal, you know, again, the finishing uh, that is subjective. I think this watch, the finishing is beautiful as any watch. I have my collection, 165. Victor, Aragon, Citizen, Bulva, Seiko, you know, they're all nice. Um, this is right up there with them. Now, as far as price point on this one here, if you go directly to your site, uh, they do have that game that everybody plays, the $1,500 USD marked down to $975. Realistically, what I like to see is what is it selling for today? And so right now, this watch can be had on Amazon. Link is in the description for $975. And I'm really glad that their website matches Amazon, right? Because there's no point in listing a watch on your website that's $1,500 if you're selling it on for $9.75, and I assume this is that they are on Amazon as an official seller, uh, that's what I like to see. You want to buy it through Amazon? Great. You want to buy it through our website? Great. It has to be a good value either way for the customer. And I think, honestly, I don't know if, if Ballast pays money to Amazon. I'm not sure how the Amazon sales uh, process works. If they, like eBay sellers pay a fee, right? 
I think you have to motivate people to buy directly from your site. So if, if it's cheaper, if you make more money uh, from selling it through the site, then give a little bit more of a discount to persuade people to buy it from the site. As of right now, I'm gonna refer you to both. You can decide where you feel most comfortable buying it. Um, as far as the Amazon listing, it says 975 plus free returns. I believe that includes shipping, free delivery, um, uh, and the only addition it has, they do list on the Amazon listing, three hands, 8215 Miota. So that's most likely the uh, movement number. So do your research, figure out, you know, whether you like that or not. Um, I believe Miota, I think I have several Miota watches or dr several Miota power watches. Uh, they're great. W what can I say? Um, it is available in a couple different colors. You have your brown, black, green and blue if memory serves me correct but uh what i'd rather you do is just click the link in the description check it out read more about it and if i can help you guys in any way drop me a comment i'm always here to help ballast thank you very much for your generosity uh i'm, I'm really enjoying our collaboration i look forward to many more um and again again guys you know uh, comments are answered throughout the day so you got a question ask i'm here to help have a good one guys take care